Hi all, let's look at the Lasker trap next. So after d4, you can play a gambit system uh, against this, and I've been playing the Albin Counts Gambit a lot, and it, and this trap is from the Albin Counts Gambit. So it's named after Emmanuel Lasker, who was a very strong and long-lasting world champion in the game of chess. So this um, trap was named after him. So after d takes e5, in the Albin, you're, you're playing this d4 move to kind of dislocate the white position. Okay, you've lost the pawn. Um, a common move here, um, which is a mistake, um, is to challenge that pawn immediately. Um, safest for white, maybe play like knight f3 and then just g3 and bishop g2. But if white is too keen to remove that pawn, um, maybe they're you know tempted by trying to uh, exchange off queens and keep your king in the center. That this seems like a plausible idea um, to play the move e3. But here you've got a very nice tactical sequence, and I'll, I'll emphasize first the splat line in inverted commas. So the splat line goes bishop b4 check, and white interposes the bishop, let's, let's say. And here you play d takes e3, believe it or not, leaving your bishop hanging. And after bishop takes b4, you've got this lovely check on f2, as if you're trying to win. Um, the, the queen. So if king takes, obviously you just take the queen. Right. But the thing is, king e2. And I, I'll, I'll let you see if you can discover uh, the amazing move here, uh, which isn't totally obvious if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay. I hope you found it. It's actually a curious under promotion. Very rarely do traps have under promotions, and it's a beautiful example because it really is effective to play this under promotion to a knight with check. Uh, so, if uh, rook takes g1, then you have a lovely skewer with bishop g4 check, winning that queen. So that's terrible. And um, let's see, if king f2, you just take the queen. So if king e1, um, you throw in a check on h4 and say king d2 and it's a horrendous position now for white and possibly the the most effective plan for black is to rapidly mobilize the queen side to try and castle queen side with the king really exposed so knight c6 gains a tempo on that bishop so say uh, white challenges the queen now with queen e1 not minding about losing the bishop at the end of it you can throw in queen d4 check and now take this bishop. Okay, the queen for me one was also protecting now b4, but this is still a really crushing position for black. Queen f2, for example. So you're still maintaining the idea that if you can get in bishop f5 and castle's queen side, it will, it will be all over. Check, I mean, it's all over now. It's really crushing. Bishop d3, say, bishop g4. Knight c3 and say black castles queen side. Um, it's completely lost for white here. So say um, knight f3, knight c6, and if g3, Andrew Martin's been recommending a gambit, I think, sometimes with f6, where you, you know it's like playing a sort of rever reverse Morris Smith gambit and you you can try and just go for a hack attack in this kind of line where bishop g4 and queen d7 and it's a very exciting um, game position uh, probably unsound but um, maybe interesting to try out um, also let, let's take another alternative idea say you don't want to, to sacrifice with f6 um, you can just just play bishop g4. The problem is, uh, years ago I learnt this line where uh, white has this powerful uh, potential pawn sacrifice, which is really really annoying in this line, which which I think I've scored with white actually in in long over the board games. And the idea is to set a trap for black based on this b7 square. We've seen a lot of devastation based on b7 and the fianchetto of bishop recently, and this is just another example that um, 
say uh, you play um, inadvertently bishop h3, I think it might be here where there's this lethal um, e6. So if you play queen takes e6, you're being trapped with knight g5, winning that bishop, end of game. And if you play bishop takes e6, then knight e5, and you're getting crunched. Because if you take, then you're getting mated on b7. So it's not all glamorous playing um, this uh, this system. Um, sorry about that. Let's let's go back to that position. So you're casting queenside. This queen b3 sets this e6 trap. So you might not have been aware of this. That if if you're going to play this routine, just trying to get rid of uh, White's Fincher a bishop. Remember about e6 and knight e5. This is an old trap, which. Uh, which is pretty devastating actually. So if f takes, then bishop takes h3. You just lost the bishop. And if bishop takes e6, then knight e5. So when you castle queenside, your your king is more vulnerable anyway. There's there's more squares to protect, so it's always a bit controversial castling queenside. And this is one of the problems, which is why actually I I did kind of like even you know more unusual treatments. Of this opening with moves like c5 before knight c6, or this gambit f6, um, and also with the gambit um, with f6 um, in blitz at least, I've I found some success just just playing like bishop e7 and castling kingside, just trying to get pressure on the f file. That sometimes works, but of course blitz is is full of the importance of the initiative and pressure is emphasized you know because if one mistake or they people set, pe spend too long trying to find an accurate defense then they're going to lose on time so the Alvin counter game it's not bad it was actually being used in correspondence chess as well by some some famous uh, players so it's an interesting game especially if white doesn't know the theory and especially if white doesn't play the fianchetto line with g3 and bishop g2 so the Lasker trap i think i'm i might have uh, not been completely aware of the trap myself so when people have been playing e3 i haven't been um, thinking of the bishop b4 uh, line now here actually um we're playing e3 there but there's also knight f3 and e3 which is similarly pro probably not that good but e3 here then there's bishop b4 check actually let's have a look at that knight f3 uh, knight c6 can white play e3 here well you might be able to throw in this check but here the bishop's now protected uh, by your knight so you can just take here and there's a big difference actually in, in the position now this completely favors you because uh, you could just just take on f2 then then just um, take the queen and then take the bishop crushing so the bishop b4 check is still kind of lethal in this line um, and if knight d2 then uh, this looks bad positionally d takes slicing up those pawns and here it looks as though black can just get a very nice game with say bishop g4 and then maybe queen e7 putting pressure on e5 then try and castle queen side that looks good but uh, the critical splat line as I say is not knight f3 it's this uh, e3 immediately so you just play this bishop b4 check with the intention of leaving that bishop and pre completely and pre after d takes e3 so it's a lovely example actually of a pawn under promotion with check um, so f takes g1 knight check um, is there any key lines we've missed here? Uh, let's see. Yes, there's a check line which occurred where white throws in the check. So say here, queen a4 check. Okay, what would you do here? Well, you're still sacking that bishop because now you have a powerful move, queen h4. So rather unsubtly um, hitting that f2 square. And here, um, if uh, knight e2, you can play queen takes f2 check, 
and bishop g4. Now, although you've sacrificed uh, that bishop over there, look at white's king. It's being really kicked around. So you can castle queenside here. Now, knight d4 check, and it starts to get a bit gruesome. Knight e7, say. And you can, you know, it's forcibly like starting to win material. Uh, my, the position on is, is just under far too much um, pressure. Knight b3 check, so that opens up the rook for access to d1. And now queen e1 check. And now if knight d1, then queen d2 check, and bishop f5 is mating. So that's how to get to the white king. So queen d3 or queen c2, we mate after that. So um, that's really a beautiful move, isn't it? Knight b3. So this is a fast way of exploiting the fact you've castled queen side. So let's see, queen takes b3, queen e1, queen d2, and now bishop f5. Lovely stuff. So was there anything better for white in this line? Um, if we go back, so queen h4, what about g3, you might ask? Okay, I know we're getting into a maze of variations now, but e takes, and now queen d4 check. Okay, so say uh, king king here, then you've got queen takes b2 check. With the king getting kicked around, ends up losing material on all, all parts of the board, so even on a1. So that's an advantage. Uh, because so, bishop c3 you can just take on b1 now, so the queen's not trapped. And if queen moves, then the knight takes bishop. And if queen b3, you can still play knight takes. And here, maybe you can even just take on e5, that's probably simplest. So, getting into a bit of a maze there after this attempt at kind of fighting back with this queen a4 check. Uh, so if queen a4 check, you have to bear in mind that you're sacking that bishop for this queen h4, because after g3, um, you've got e takes f2 check, and, and queen d4 and takes b2. So knight e2, and you start to unleash these resources on the queen side in this line. So check bishop g4, Castle's queen side, knight d4 using that pin, so the king's getting kicked back. Now knight e7, and it's difficult for white to do anything here. Um, say uh, a3, as another example, instead of bishop e7, then still bishop f5, and there's an immediate threat now of bishop c2 and then queen e1, so it's fairly hopeless. So here, say bishop c2 in this position as well, and white's losing the queen. So anyway, we've got into a bit of a, a complex tree there of variations. Let's go back and just review the splat line for the third time, the simplest line, where there's no knight f3, there's an immediate e3. So you play the check, you leave your bishop and pre, because of this under promotion, beautiful idea. And um, if White wants to try and avoid losing the queen and plays uh, king king e1, you play the check, and then you just play knight c6, trying to get your queen side out, queen side pieces out, and then this position is really kind of crushing, where you're going to just castle queen side. Okay. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.